Okay, here we go. Welcome to the garage. Apologies for the uh, mess. This is my bike, and this is where we're going to be doing the install on this asphalt tarmac. We're going to put the anchor somewhere here around the front wheel, and I will have an Oxford Beast chain permanently linked to the ground anchor. And then when I get in in the evening times or morning times, I can just link the front wheel to that one and then uh, go from there. I want it spaced out from the wall because I have a generator and power washers and other bits and bobs that I want to run all through the same anchor point. And um, so that's perfect location right there. And uh, let's get going. Hi guys and welcome to the garage floor. This is uh, asphalt and as we start off here i've already done the mark i've already marked it out but it was just to show where i had put it because it's very important you have as little rocking and i've got none so you can't hear anything because i've got none i've managed to find a little spot where there's no rocking as little rocking as possible because if you tighten down this if there's rocking and you tighten down this side shall we say it'll try and pull up that side if there's rocking and, and each bolt is fighting against each other. So you want them to all work together to go down. And what I use is an acrylic pen. I mean, you get a set of these on Amazon pretty cheap. Uh, I use these for a lot of my marking actually because um, they come in loads of different colors. And all I did was dab the very center of each hole like so. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the anchor, it'll wipe off really easily uh, with a bit of white spirits or even a, a rough cloth easily wipe off okay and that's what I do there like that now move that out of the way there's your little four, four little holes uh, four little markings there you can probably just about see them on the camera now the fixings I'm using are basically they look like screws big giant screws they're a hundred mil long the outer diameter is 12 millimeters and they have an internal thread of 10 millimeters, right? So they screw into the asphalt with the chemical resin and then they, you use their internal thread and bolt in your bolts that came with the uh, ground anchor, okay? So we have to get a hole of 14 millimeters. So the, uh, the external diameter is 12, we're going to drill a 14 millimeter diameter hole for them and the chemical resin. We're going to start off with a seven millimeter pilot hole. Now that just means I, I, I get it as straight as possible without having to work too hard. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm using an SDS plus um, drill uh, from Makita. All my stuff's Makita. I swear by them. It's quite good. And, uh, but you can use um, a homeowner's drill if you want a normal drill because asphalt is, is actually not very tough it's 20 times weaker than concrete on average um, so it will it will go through with a normal drill and um, now in this scenario you don't want the holes to be perfectly smooth all the way in you want it doesn't matter if they're if they're as long as they're straight it doesn't matter if they're messy if the walls of the hole are messy it doesn't matter because that chemical resin will have something to grab onto It'll really grab onto a rough, a rough walled hole uh, more so than it would have, if it had a nice smooth wall. It, 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 it's, it's not going to be as strong, obviously. So let me drill this first hole for you guys. And then I'm just going to do the three holes exactly the same way. You won't see the next three holes. So I'm just going to do that without the camera. I'll do the first one for you guys. And, um, and then uh, you can see how I'm doing it. And uh, because the bolts... That I'm putting in are 100 mil long they recommend you set the depth of your drill to 105 so which is actually what it's set to right at this moment that's that's pretty much 105 already so I will go to that depth and then we'll uh, we'll go from there so here we go I always like to just push on it quickly give it a little um, Little gap into and try and get this as straight as possible. Right, 
Now, it doesn't take a genius to see how easy that was. And with a, um, with a normal drill, that will still be just easy, easy work. So um, don't worry about if you have an SDS drill or a big expensive drill, you'll be able to do this with a, a standard drill, I would imagine, and a standard uh, drill bit. Just take your time. So let's change over to the 14 mil drill bit quickly. And then set our depth again to 105 because this drill bit is longer. So we need to set our depth to 105. Quickly do that for you guys. You guys can use a bit of tape when you do this. Uh, I just I just usually just use the, the depth gauge that comes with the drill. It's very, very, very accurate. Very accurate way of doing it. Tighten your handle up and then recheck again to you check your depth so that is 105 mil okay and go down into the same hole again and try and get it straight as possible So there you go, wipe it that way so it doesn't go over your little markings you've made for your other holes, otherwise that would be very silly. So this is what we've got now, let me get you right in. So you've got a pretty decent hole there, okay. Now I'm going to drill the other four holes, uh, three holes, apologies, uh, the other three holes Without you guys, you don't need to see somebody drilling three holes. I will do that really quickly, and then I'll get back to you uh, after I've done that and show you the final result. Now, don't worry if you do the holes and they're elongated or, you know, don't worry about that. When you put your fittings in there, they'll be loose. They'll be able to wobble like that because it needs space down the side for that chemical resin to go off, okay? So I'm gonna do the other three holes and then get back to you guys, okay? Okay guys, uh, here's our four holes, uh, all done, drilled and done. Uh, just make sure that they're all to the right depth, 105 mm. that's what I've done. And like I say, don't worry about the tidiness of the holes. You're going to be filling that with resin. That's how we're going to do it. Now, there's no point in me cleaning out these holes now. Um, I'm currently waiting for the for the uh, internal bolts to come for this. Um, you won't have to wait because it'll be in the next part of this video. Um, but they will slide in there with some resin. I'll clean out the holes on that occasion uh, with my my tube and my brush and we'll go from that. Um, but like I said, this part is actually, the only important part of this is getting the holes the right depth and the right, um, the right spacing for your, for your uh, base plate. And mine all match up perfectly, basically. They all match up perfectly on there and um and that's that that's how it's going to go on the don't forget to put your d shackle in i'm also going to glue two little rubber stops on this shackle so when it goes on the floor it doesn't make a you no know, clanking noise because people live above my garage and i don't want to be upsetting them so don't worry about the tidiness of the holes just get them the right depth the right diameter and uh, the most important part is clean them out when you're about to put in the resin Okay, that's the most important part. On to the next part of the video. Okay everyone, I am here with my four drilled holes and my anchor point bolts have come and these are 12 mil on the outside and they have a 10 mil internal thread. Hopefully you can see that. Internal thread in there. 
Let's see if I can get that on camera. Inside there is an internal thread and it will match the bolts I have. And these bolts screw directly into them. That's what you have. Okay. So what we have to do is clean out our holes. And I'm going to show you how to do one of those. And uh, I'll do the other four off camera. So let's pick uh, this one. All right, get your tube, put it in. Don't put your face directly above the hole because it will blow dust in your face. Four times with the brush, all the way down, one, two, three, four, give it another blow. Give it another few brushes, just to be sure, the cleaner the better. Okay, now I'll do the other three off camera and then I'll get back to you with the resin. Okay, so now we're at the stage where we're going to put the resin in the holes and then we're going to um, insert our anchor points. So again, these are the anchor points and they've got an internal thread diameter of M10, so 10 millimeters and the external is 12. The hole should be 14, and then these go in. You have a little plastic cap on top that you just kind of put on so the resin doesn't get in the hole. And you just insert it then to about flush with the surface, like that, okay. Now, when you use this resin, you have to use a special resin gun. It's got an, it's not the same as a silicone gun because it's got an internal plunger as well for the hardener that's in this sleeve. This will have your resin will have a a uh, curing time depending on the ambient temperature. The ambient temperature at the moment is about two degrees, so this will take about. I'll have a half an hour's work time and probably a couple of hours before it's fully solidly hard. So I'll come back in maybe three, four hours and then we'll go from there with regards to installing the actual ground plate. And we'll go from there. So let's uh, get this underway. We have to waste the first bit of resin. Let's get a suitable container. Suitable piece of paper. It'll waste the first, it'll come out white firstly and then it'll go kind of grey. Once it goes grey and it looks fully mixed, and you can see it start to change colour. I think that's now grey. That is your resin pre mixed. Get that out of the way. Now we fill the holes, we fill them pretty much two-thirds you can wipe up any excess that squeezes out as you insert your screw and just keep an eye on it okay that's one Again, I can't, I can't overemphasize the importance of cleaning the holes out, making sure they're really clean. There we are, that one. Uh, 
as you put these screws in if you decide to go with these or if you decide to just put your actual screws from your ground anchor directly in which you can do I don't know if it's as, don't think it's be as strong but it'll still be very very strong you screw them into this actual resin you actually twist them in so you put it in you twist as you go and it will actually slowly pull itself in That one is now flush. Next one, screw it in as we go. Don't worry about that excess. We will get that off. Clean it up best you can, and we can always use a cloth in a minute. Get that off best you can. That's why you have these little plastic lids on there so the resin doesn't get on your threads. The, in the internal threads, I mean. Just wipe that away and so on and so forth no, I'm not happy with that so I'm going to put some more resin in there I'd rather have more than this Again, that's more like it. Get it in. Let's wipe away the excess. I've just gotten that on my hands, but don't get it on your hands. You're not supposed to. Just make sure they're flush. the floor this is a stage you have to get right because once this stuff goes off these are permanent, these are in the floor permanently. So the stage is important. Okay, and that looks okay. Just do a little close up, you guys, so you can see what we're working with here. This is how they look. get an idea of what you should have at the, this point in your process. Don't be afraid to give it a little wipe and tidy it up.
try and keep the resin flat on the surface because when you when you put your ground anchor on top you don't want any bubbles underneath or anything like that you want it to be nice and flat and flush sorry uh, <coughs> forgot to press record on this but you're just coming in on me putting the bolts in that's all it is that's the hole you're left with there you can see where it marries up with the anchor in the ground drop it in start it off gently if it catches don't force it which is not it's going in nicely this is exactly how the other three went in by the way just literally get it in I like to tighten these up right tight very tight They're really, really tight in the ground. That moves freely. Seems solid enough. I will test that with a breaker bar later on or a pry bar just to make sure. But um, there's no gaps underneath, there's no wobble. It's not, it didn't feel like it moved or slipped. So let's get you back up here. Right, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so what you have here is our ball bearings. I've just laid that one in the hole. It's not stuck in there. Put it in the hole. You get your little bolt that comes with the kit. You want that and a hammer. One tap's enough. That's in. Don't start hammering the crap out of it. You don't need to. One medium hit. That is now in. Yeah, if I hit it twice, you see it doesn't change, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's not going to do anything. One little whack is enough. And now you've got your little plates that go over the top. Try and get them as flush as possible. They'll go in a lot easier if they're flush. Alright, that's flush. And I would like to put a bit of cardboard on top gently and try and hit it as square as possible and that's in that's flush now pretty much one more little that's flush I'm not whacking that hard I'm just literally giving it a short sharp short sharp bang if it's nice and level on the first that's not as level a bit more level hit it directly in the center go again Okay, that's flush. Get it as get it as flat as possible to the to, to the metal plate. All right, and I'm hovering this over the top. I'm not touching it. I'm hovering it, and then one sharp, sharp whack. Another one. Another one just to get that level. There you go. I'm not, I'm not smashing the crap out of that. Alright. Oh, that one's loose. Give that another whack. One more. One more. Yeah. That is that. Okay, so a quick overview of uh, my setup now with the new uh, ground anchor. I have a Xena alarmed disc lock. That's just to give me an audible warning if anybody, um, anyone goes near the bike. Then I have the Light Lock X1, which apparently is a really good D lock. It gets really good reviews from people who've actually chopped them up. The 22mm Oxford Beast. Or monster, whichever one beast I think it is, and then we have the uh, 
Torp Mega over there. And I've still got plenty of space to put another couple of chains through there. There's loads of space. Which I will be to uh, chain up my, my tree chipper and my generators and stuff. I've got some uh, three meter pragmasis chains. That will be getting chained onto them. And then on the back I have the Xena. I think that's 19 mil chain with the Xena alarmed uh, lock. And the bike's also got a uh, hidden tracker on as well. So just about making it less desirable to steal. Um, she needs a clean right now, but that's something else I can do another day. Um, and that's it. Any questions, put something in the comments. That's rock solid now. And that's not going to go anywhere. Um, I know people will say, oh, put your D-lock on this side of the tyre. You know, it makes it harder for anyone to cut it and get in and stuff. And it does. But I don't want the weight of this chain resting on the spokes. So that's why I've got it you know, down low right around the uh, rim it's got a rubber sheath on there anyway so yeah any questions uh, you can give me a message i'd like to get back to people as soon as possible and uh, thanks for watching cheers